All right, welcome back. I'm Todd Bishop from TechFlash.com in Seattle. And I'm John Cook. And we've got a great guest in the studio. Like I was saying, I've been excited about this one all week. Uh, Steve Wiebe, for anyone who hasn't seen the, the movie King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters, is a, a teacher in Kirkland. You, you teach algebra, right, Steve? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. But you're better known, at least in the video game world, for uh, being the, the one-time champion of Donkey Kong. Um, do you remember the score that uh, that you had when you first uh, took the top right um well at, in the movie that when i first got it at fun spot it was 985,000 maybe 600 i can't remember the exact but then when i finally got the record at the end of the movie was 1,049,200 yeah, you remember it down to the exact. Yeah, yeah I figured you would. I remember yeah. those, that number. Yeah. So Steve is really a legend in the, the video game world, and one of the reasons we wanted to have you in this week, not only because you're local and just Donkey Kong's a great topic to, to talk about, is that recently the, the record actually uh, was taken again by a name that will be familiar to people who watch the movie, and that's that's Billy Mitchell. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so how are you feeling at this point? And you and I talked about this a little bit earlier in the week, but but how are you feeling about the record? And are you thinking about going after it again yourself? Yeah, I've been I've been going after it this summer, um, and I know Billy has been playing. You know, I figured he was also going after it because a uh, guy from New York, Hank Chen, had the record. I think he got it back in February, and he held it for a few months, and then I knew Billy was going to come out again. And so that's great. I love that everyone's keep playing, and we have new competitors, and it's just, it's a great rivalry that we're building up. And there's going to be a Donkey Kong tournament. They're hoping to make a tournament at the next Hall of Fame in Iowa next year um, where they'll bring all the Donkey Kong competitors in and set up. So I don't know how they would arrange the – the winner of the tournament, but they want to have every everybody that is competing in for the title in Donkey Kong get together and and duke it out. So that should be fun. So like the NCAA's where you're like have one <laughs> round and like whoever gets the highest score in that round ends up going to the next round. I don't know that that might be one way or it'd be it'd be hard to agree on what what's the winner to the, the best score at the end of the weekend. I don't know. It'd be yeah. that so. So when you say you're going after the record, I mean. How do you, how do you train? <laughs> yeah. We were joking involved? before that you're you know your yeah. your posture you're working on your sitting and what have yeah. you. But really, what do you do to train to get ready? Or is it just putting in the <laughs> just that hours? Yeah, just I've always already trained the whole twenty five years I've been playing it. That's pretty much my training. So right now it's just sitting down and recording every game. I play a game in the morning. I try to um, every day. I've been off for the summer. I'm a teacher, but I go back next week. So. It'll be so tougher to play. It'll cut into your donkey. Cut my, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those darn kids. Yeah, darn, yeah that's right. <laughs> well, you mentioned that you're a teacher and, and you're an algebra teacher in Kirkland. Um, but in the movie, one thing that's really interesting is they show you doing the, the explaining how you get to the top rung in one. And, and it's it's clearly some geometry that you're doing. Exactly. How, how much math is involved in Donkey Kong? And, and to what extent has that made you a good player? Well, there's math in figuring out do I want to gain points here? And you're going to lose points here, so you have to figure out the net profit. Yeah. So there's some of that. There's the geometry you mentioned, pattern recognition, you know, realizing, you know, these fireballs are behaving in such a manner when I do this, and I can start reading their behavior and, and anticipating what they're going to do. And the barrels react to your movement. So that's something that a lot of people have known, where you can control the barrels. So there's a lot of math, like you said, that goes into this. Yeah. Was there an initial spark or th can you remember the first time you played Donkey Kong or did it, did it click with you or? Oh yes. I remember that first game. Where were <laughs> you? Yeah, tell us Where were you? And, uh, it's like the first date, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How was that? Just a pizza. You know, they used to have them all in the pizza parlors and I think it was a pizza haven in Factoria. If anyone from the Bellevue area remembers Factoria. So I remember playing it for the first time, and I was horrible. Like Billy mentioned, the first in the movie, he says like the average person lasts a minute on Donkey Kong, and I was probably like a minute <laughs> at that point. I, but I just loved the game, and there was a big buzz about this new game. So it was, you know, it was intriguing. Had four different screens. I was playing Pac-Man before that, and it was just the same maze over and over. But it was fun, you know, if you memorize the pattern you could get pretty far in Pac-Man. But I, I like the new Donkey Kong game because of the multi-boards and, and the graphics were a lot 
cooler, I thought. Mario, if you watch him as he moves up and down ladders, it's it's pretty detailed for back then. And, it, and the music was cool and the whole concept, and it was a simple game again, one jump button and a controller. So it was just a natural progression to play Donkey Kong. Yeah. And you mentioned Billy Mitchell. Uh, I don't know if we want to jump right into that, but <laughs> I just watched the movie this week, and, I mean, it's it's just such a classic film because it's kind of a, a hero villain uh uh, saga, and I mean, I can't, you can't paint a picture of a villain better than I think Billy Mitchell. I mean, he even kind of looks the part. Yeah, the what's with the hair? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I mean, what 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 is your relationship with him? Because in the movie, he's very uh, standoffish. He doesn't want to associate with you. I think he shows up at the restaurant at one time and then leaves because he finds out you're there. So, um, what, what what is your relationship with him? Yeah, it was tense during that moment. I never really was face to face to him with him and during the time of the movie was being filmed there was maybe a couple times that you see in the movie where he he's in the same room and um so we never re- were able to really talk at all during the movie and i knew that he was upset with he thought i was in the camp with Roy Schilt which is another character yeah, the characters in this movie. film are just yeah. great. I yeah. I love the part where they they have kind of Billy Mitchell's uh, compatriots who are trying to f- you know figure his, out whether you have an <laughs> yeah have yeah his henchmen whether figure out whether you have an illegal Donkey Kong machine and and then the guy who is very upset that you get to the kill screen first at the at the uh, video game uh, parlor. So yeah, Brian Koo. Yeah, yeah. But but then it's also a classic redemption story too, and, and maybe not redemption in that word. But I mean, essentially, you prove your character through the through your actions as documented in the movie. I mean, in some ways, you sort of become a folk hero through this movie. Well, thanks. I I, <laughs> I, I, I knew I had to get past. They thought I was cheating, and I knew I had to show my uh, prove my integrity. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to have a lot more with Steve Wiebe when we come back. Uh, you're listening to Tech Flash on News Talk 97.3 Cairo FM. All right, welcome back. Uh, Todd Bishop and John Cook from techflash.com. And uh, if you were with us before, you know we're talking with Steve Wiebe, the Donkey Kong legend. And we were just talking about uh, Steve's uh, sort of competition rivalry over the years with uh, Billy Mitchell as portrayed in the movie King of Kong. Um, so, so I know you actually just went back recently to the video game Hall of Fame, and you saw Billy there. And there's actually a picture on Facebook of you two shaking hands. So he, he confronted you at least once. <laughs> yeah. No. I, yeah. He had um, when he got the record, I, there wasn't an official announcement until the video game Hall of Fame. He he. So I knew about his um, reported record, and I, when I first saw him, I go, "Hey, congratulations!" And I shook his hand. He goes. I don't believe everything you read, uh, but I knew he's just kind of playing, <laughs> well, playing it's a, around. Well, it's important. I don't know if we addressed this in the first segment. So one of the interesting things is that Billy Mitchell uh, recently got the records not only in Donkey Kong, but in Donkey Kong Jr. on the same day, I guess, or the same weekend? Or? It was the same yeah, day, I guess. He was in Florida at an arcade. It was officiated by uh, Todd Rogers of Twin Galaxies, and I don't know the number of people were, who were at the arcade. So he first got the Donkey Kong record, and then in an article that I someone forwarded to me, uh, he said, well, he looked over at the Donkey Kong Jr. And, and said, well, I got one more thing I need to do. <laughs> I guess it wasn't originally planned to do both, yeah. but since he got the record in Donkey Kong, he just figured he'd go for the junior record. Yeah. yeah. How do you describe the psychology or the mental uh, mental uh, person behind Billy Mitchell? 